Humans have been experimenting with color for centuries. Uh, color is something that interests me in how we use it in our daily lives. And one of the things we're going to talk about with uh, women artists here at the Toronto Outdoor Art Exhibition is the use of color and how they use color in their art uh, and its impact in their lives. On this episode of Extraordinary Women TV. I'm here with dancer, choreographer, and Nuit Blanche programmer, Jen Goodwin. Um, you're performing at uh, Nathan Phillips Square uh, for the Toronto Outdoor Art Exhibition. Tell us a little bit about your, your art as a, as a performing artist. Well, most of my work is movement-based, so I would consider myself a dance artist. Um, and it's goes, it deals with um, choreography, sometimes text, um, emotions bubbling under the surface of, of the physicality of what I show. Um, in some cases, it also involves music and rhythm. In this piece I'm presenting at Nathan Phillips Square, it's called If I Should Stumble. I'm working with a stunt performer and as well as other performing artists um, as an ensemble. It is looking at falling from grace. Um, I'm, I'm, it's my second piece I've done about falling. I seem to be very interested in the physicality as well as the um, intention and emotion behind falling. Basically, mistakes, screwing up, how do we get back on our feet again, banging our head against the same wall, trying to learn something, trying to get up and move on. It does, uh, you know, you talk, about the tr you talk about the theme falling, I mean, how does that play into, into your work uh, as a performing artist? Um, the subtext of what we say, um, the, yeah, and being, being human basically with all, our, all the beauty and mistakes equally involved in that. So wh what sparked you to, to want to become a dancer? Um, to begin with and how long have you been dancing? Well I think I've been dancing since I was six you know ballet class etc and then um, but I pursued it as a career once I think I realized it was a real um, physical and emotional outlet for expression. Um, it There was something I think along that that straddles basically something that's athletic and artistic and I think dancing and movement has both of those in it that um, that really turned me on and that I really enjoy you know we've we've heard this the stereotype of the starving artist for um, for centuries um, what kind of significance does that have for you I mean is there such a thing as a starving artist Absolutely, it should go away. But no, people are artists are really um, struggling. Artists are um, vastly underpaid, undervalued in many cases. Um, I think, yeah, I think we really need to advocate for better conditions for artists. And I'd like to think I'm a part of that voice. Doing that. And what do you think would be sort of the one thing we need to do to change that? Pay them like you would your plumbers. <laughs> you know, if we want an artist to do something just don't assume that they're doing it for exposure I think it was um, was it Charles Patchen is that his name Charles Pachter who said um, many artists have almost died from exposure from overexposure because we offer that to artists and at the same time you can't pay your rent you can't pay your bills with that and um, people artists need to put food on, food on the table just like anyone else and this is what they're good at you know this is why we ask them to do things to make art we asked you know, we're going to ask an electrician to do what they need to do to our house and we should pay artists with the same amount of respect. How does colour play into your art as a performing artist? And we were looking at the colour palette of the work. So even as, I guess it's representing also the emotions and the sort of the tides that um, the layers underneath the work. So the main performer who has a bit more of a chaotic feel is in black and sort of more severe and hot pink heels. And then the other performers are all in taupes and creams and tan colors and they are representing more sort of the the main performer's subconscious, the 
the, wa the waves and the ripples that she might create through her life, and I really wanted them to match the stage as much as possible. So they blend to a certain degree, but so through, those, through that color palette we create one visual look. If you had one piece of advice for a young girl who um, is just really has a dream of being a dancer, hasn't yet started, what would it be? I'd say don't let it go. You know, just focus on it, keep at it, and um, be the best you can be at it. And at the same time, it's also good to know how to do something else to help support your art as well and to help pay those bills. So I'd say be, be multi-skilled. You know, find out, find out how to do the bookkeeping as well. Find out how to write your grants. Find out how to represent yourself um, as an artist. But I'd say part of it is just hang on to it. I think there's, I think it's so, it's hard to be an artist, and so many people will tell you in messages, whether it's um, direct or indirectly, to do something else. And I think if your heart tells you to do it, and your gut really tells you to do it, then you gotta hang on to it and go for it. I mean, dance is your, your art. Uh, how do you survive? How do you, how do you earn a living? So I'm a mother of two young boys as well, three and five, and um, so it's important for me to have a bit of stability. But um, so I am also one of the um, artistic programmers of uh, Scotiabank Nuit Blanche, which is my office is right behind us here at City Hall. So I have a job that um, is creative, but also gives me some stability. And I also find I love producing work, and it's a way for me to also support artists and be an advocate for them as well on the other side. When you had your children, um, how was it for you when you went back to dancing after taking a break? Well, I find I choreograph more than perform. Um, so physically, I was, uh, I was able to give myself that time as compared to someone who's like a company dancer who's really making their living on movement. So I didn't have as much of that, but I find, you know, having children definitely takes its toll on the body and I have felt that and I think my work has slowed down. I've, I haven't been producing as much, but I find I'm sticking with it and I'm just allowing more time for the creation process. I either do projects now that take four years to create or something like this project where it's like two rehearsals bam let's do it so my time management has really changed and since becoming a mother as well as how I have to take care of my body because I have a lot less time to myself well thank you Jen Goodwin for speaking with us today if you would like to be a guest on Extraordinary Women TV visit our website at extraordinarywomentv.com I'd love to hear from you Follow me on Twitter at Shannon underscore Skinner or on Facebook at Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner. Join us next time for another episode of Extraordinary Women TV.